What's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Hopefully this video finds you all doing well tonight. I'm doing pretty well working night tonight. Usually I work during the daytimes and the afternoons into the early evening, but I just need to get out into the sun today. I went and, you know, visited some loved ones who passed uh, passed away uh, at the cemetery. Then I just spent a few hours with my son just kind of running around the yard because, you know, getting cooped up or, or staying cooped up inside just, you know, mentally unsettling, you know, so I hope you guys, you know, take a, get some vitamin D, take a, take a nice uh, opportunity to get some fresh air. I, I shouldn't complain because I'm healthy, my loved ones are healthy, and my friends are pretty healthy. I do have one friend who actually has uh, COVID-19, uh, but he's, he's hanging in there, he's doing pretty well. Uh, but I do have a job, so I'm very fortunate uh, to continue working, and I hope you guys are hanging in there as well. So today, I spent the last couple hours in preparation for today's video experimenting with Coltar. I wanted to build her in the most god mode end game build that I possibly could. I do think that Coldheart is the best rare champion by quite a bit, just my personal opinion here. She really does have a kit that's like a legendary champion. If she was a legendary champion, you would say to yourself, wow, she's a really good legendary champion. She's the hardest hitter in the entire game on her A3 Heartseeker. So today I found some really cool things out. I probably will delete the previous guide that I did on her because I found out some some just really fascinating stuff about Coltar, right? Uh, really quickly, let's go over a kit, then we'll talk about what I learned uh, in preparation for today's video. It's actually going to change the way I play Coltar from here going forward. Flurry of Arrows, a four hitter, a four hitter from a rare on an A1 is insane. Also has the big version of heal reduction for two turns. So automatically Fire Knight viable. She's really viable everywhere. In the early game, she's she's clan boss viable and arena viable. Uh, but in the late game, she's every dungeon you can use her in, really. Uh, Ice Golem, Dragon's Lair, Fire Knight, and Spider's Den. She's, she's S tier, in my opinion. In all of those, maybe A tier in Ice Golem, because on auto, she will actually target the minions first with her Heartseeker, and you really want her just targeting the Ice Golem himself. So that's the only caveat I will throw out there to you guys. Art of Pain is an AoE attack. It's pretty hard hitting, can crit for around uh, 40k in uh, level 20 dungeons. So it's not too bad. It's an AoE, has a chance of landing the poison if the target is under the heal reduction. Uh, so that's why you can use her in Clan Boss in the early game as kind of a poisoner as well. She hits hard as well, right? So Heartseeker. Attacks one enemy, decreases the target's turn meter by 100%, based on accuracy, by the way, in case you don't know that, uh, all turn meter manipulation decreasing is based on accuracy, so we want to be building her for the end game with about 200 to 250 accuracy. Uh, and then she has an extra 30% chance of inflicting a critical hit, damage increases according to max HP, it scales off of max HP, and attack. We'll come back to that, though, because there's a huge, a huge thing we learned here about the attack uh, on this. So Masteries, two things to point out here, guys. You really want the Whirlwind of Death on the offense tree. Any abilities that stack uh, e over each round is going to help her out tremendously. So Whirlwind of Death, you definitely want on her, and also Kill Streak. okay? It's going to increase damage by 3%, and it stacks across every round per, per enemy killed. So by the time she gets to the boss, hopefully she's dealing 12% more damage in, again, Ice Skull and Fire Knight in Dragon's Lair, okay? Uh, same thing with Whirlwind, it's gonna increase, uh, no, my bad, not Cycle of Violence, Whirlwind, there we go. It's gonna increase her speed up to 18, so by the time you actually get her to the boss, she's gonna be much faster, okay? Support Tree's also great for her. Uh, oh, by the way, I ended with Flawless Execution. Some people go uh, with Giant Slayer. Totally up to you guys. I'm really relying on her Heart Seeker. That's what she's known for. That's her money ability. So to have the Giant Slayer, it's not like I'm using her in Clan Boss. Don't really need it. I prefer personally Flawless Execution. But as with all these champions that we talk about here on the channel, it really depends on you. You know, don't be afraid to, don't, I should say, don't be inclined just to copy paste masteries from a YouTuber or from a website. Definitely go with what you think works for your team. Just take your time. Read the ability, read the masteries, and see what you think makes sense. Uh, I went with the support tree to get some extra accuracy. Also went with the lore of steel to get extra set bonus uh, perks, and then master hexer is really the only uh, over. I went master hexer over sniper and over spirit haste because I just think that's the best option for her on the support tree. So that is the masteries. Let's talk about artifacts, guys. Now, this is going to be super interesting. At least it was to me. I have an attack percentage chest on her. 
and I really prioritize, we'll take a quick look at the gear that I have on her, but we're gonna come back to the chest because that's not my main piece for her, okay? So I'm going for crit damage, uh, crit damage and crit rate, okay? Crit damage, crit rate, and accuracy, and then a little bit of speed too is what I'm really looking for on Cold Heart. I don't care at all about her attack percentage. Don't care at all. Uh, and I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna prove that attack percentage is just gonna hurt your Cold Heart. No matter if you're the mid game or in the end game, you're always gonna go with HP or defense on, uh, preferably HP, because it scales a little bit better, but defense gets the job done too on her chest, always. And I'll show you why, I'll demonstrate that for you guys, okay? So the idea behind Cold Heart is, even if you're the early game or mid game with Cold Heart, you wanna be putting a crit damage gauntlets on her, not crit rate, because you only have to build her crit rate to 70%, for her A3, her Heart Seeker. So that affords you the luxury of trying to build her crit rate to 70% on your other gear, getting that from the substats, and then going crit damage on your main stat on the gauntlets, okay? So I'm going crit damage, I'm looking for some accuracy. Uh, attack doesn't hurt, but it doesn't help either. We'll talk about that more. So, so far, no crit rate. So we really had to go hard on the crit rate on the chest, I believe, in the boots maybe. So I have more crit damage. You can see crit damage over 300% on my cold heart right now, 308, I believe. And it could be higher if I really wanted to go all out, but I decided to kind of temper uh, the crit rate. So I have uh, the, the uh, crit damage chest here and speed, some a little bit of defense there, some accuracy, and then some crit rate here on the crit damage gauntlets, okay? So if I found a five star or six star rather, I could get even more crit damage. But anyway, guys, the point I wanna make to you guys right now off the bat here, uh, by the way, crit damage on the amulet, of course, 40%. Accuracy, definitely wanna be going accuracy banner. Again, I have 223 accuracy on my cold heart. You wanna be aiming for right around that. And then uh, I went HP, a lot of HP. Uh, HP on the ring, HP percentage on the ring. It's a really great ring for her because her uh, her total HP right now is 35k. Definitely viable, right? I want her defense to be around 2,000, and we'll talk about why in just a moment. Her crit rate's only 49%, so we're really 21% short of where we need to be. But again, I just I just have their crit rate uh, chest on her right now, or excuse me, the attack or a percentage chest on her right now, just to demonstrate how awful it is to go attack percentage chest on her. And we'll show that right now. All right, had to get some energy. So guys, I tried this run 20 times or more. I didn't even finish the battle. I just wasted so much energy with different gear to see how hard Cold Heart would hit. And every time out of 22 times now, I think it's over 20, she's hit for 1.3 to 1.4 million when I had more attack percentage, more attack gear, that attack percentage chest plate on her. So we're gonna start out with Stagnite, decrease defense on the spider, and check it out. It's gonna be 1.3 to 1.4 mil. Boom, 1.4 mil, exactly what I told you guys. Now check this out. And again, I could run this, you know, just take my word for it. I've ran this every time she hits for 1.3 to 1.4 million. Uh, I'm, I'm not because one thing I just want to make be aware of that I tried this more than just one time Okay, uh, in case she didn't crit on some of these attacks now. We're gonna go back and I could have just went to the champion screen there, but whatever We're gonna go ahead and put a defense on her instead none of the other their crit rate will go up But none of the other uh, stats on her will change. So here she is we're gonna go with a same thing a crit damage chest piece Crit damage, here it is, and here it is, right? So my crit rate's gonna go up, my crit damage will go up by 6%, my attack is gonna go down by 633. Now I'm getting more defense, I'm getting more HP, and this is the build that I love on my cold heart. So let's take a look at her total stats now. 164 speed, her crit rate's right where I need it at 71%, 314 crit damage, 2900 attack, 36K and 2K defense. That's gonna be a high enough HP, a high enough defense so that she's always staying alive, and then she's gonna hit harder every time, which really doesn't make that much sense. I have an extra 6% crit damage on her, and I have way less, 633 less attack. And I have more defense and more HP, but no, none of her attack is based on H HP and defense, but yet, she's gonna be putting out way more damage. Now she's gonna be hitting, instead of 1.3 million to 1.4 million, now she's gonna be hitting from 1.4 to 1.7 million. 
I don't know, guys. Here we go. Check it out. She's not as fast, so I think she's going to be like the third or fourth to go now. Just in the, the order of this team composition. But we're going to do the same thing. Start with the decreased defense. And like the big takeaway here, the reason I'm, you know, showing you all this stuff is because you should, by, by no circumstances, really, unless you really care a lot about 1.1 million, by the way, on, uh, on Royal Guard, on his big, uh, based on max HP ability. Ready, guys? Here it goes. Boom! 1.59 million. 1.6 million. Is it just because of the 6% extra crit damage? I guess, maybe it just scales because it's based off max enemy HP. Either way, guys, listen, if you're using her for just the cold heart, I mean, just the heart secret ability, there's no reason. There's no reason to put an attack percentage chest on her. Again, it will impact, I'm assuming, the damage a little bit on the A1 and the A2, but really, I mean, you want her to, you want to keep her alive anyway. There's no reason not to go with the defense or the HP chest on her. She's putting out way more damage with, with 633 less attack, you know? Anyway, let's go ahead and highlight her in a couple other areas. We'll put her in our Dragons team here. Let's put her in for... Actually, let's let's start in like a more free-to-play team. I already had one build out in Ice Golem, so... Ice Golem, I think we have no legend. Okay, we have a couple legendaries, but whatever, guys. I'm just going to show you her in every dungeon. And Ice Golem is the one dungeon that I mentioned earlier, guys, that, you know, it's not the best for auto. We're going to actually take her off auto when we get to the, uh, the Ice Golem himself. If she auto attacked onto the Ice Golem, it would be insane because it would be one of the faster runs. I think this would be probably my best comp. Uh, but she doesn't, so I do prefer having a Royal Guard in this comp. If you don't have a Royal Guard, she still gets the job done. She puts out a decent amount of damage anyway. Uh, and she can help you with the waves and stuff. So, let's see how much she crits for here on the waves. So, not much, actually. <laughs> but, uh, a little bit weaker hits there. I don't know, maybe some of the- when I was- maybe that was- that was her A1. So, let's see her A2 here. There we go. So about 33, 27k. Her A1 not hitting very hard at all. So again, I don't know. I mean, Giant Slayer, some people go with Giant Slayer on her. But I, again, really prefer just going with the extra crit damage. So now we get to... to uh, I want to take it off auto? All right. So Heart Seeker is one turn away. So the next time she gets to go, we're going to take it off auto. And we're going to go ahead and hit the Ice Golem himself. So looks like right about now. And let's see how much she hits for here. That's going to be a nice 539,000 damage. Not too shabby at all, right? And we're wasting a little bit of time taking it off auto attack, but uh, and she gets frozen there, unfortunately. I do like having Dark Elaine. Probably Dark Elaine would be a better fit than Biggin in this team. Uh, I use Biggin in this team because I like having Miscreated Monster and Biggin as kind of a dual crowd control tandem. But still, even with me wasting some time on this on this comp here you're gonna see that she just she's a, just a heavy hitter she's great to have i think she's just such a solid champion against any boss in this game i mean if Plarium ever releases another dungeon i'd probably use her in that one too right so i think we're one turn away actually she was frozen so i think we're two turns away from her heart seeker and that will probably be the final blow on this ice golem here so we'll let her go one more time then we'll take it off auto and uh oh oh she had it up already Crap! That would have been done right there. My bad. <laughs> that was unfortunate, but either way, we'll just extend by a little bit there. So she landed her poison there. You can see, you know, she's stacking up a few poisons against the uh, the ice golem because the uh, the heal reduction is on there as well. Heal reduction is helpful as well against Fire Knight, so you can really use her anywhere. She's a great champion, and I mean, having her with a 300 plus crit damage is just insane. You don't have to build her up with, I mean, obviously you probably don't have access to that much crit damage in your gear. The reason I like these videos, just to kind of prove that, hey, she gets the job done better than a lot of legendary champions at what she does, which is hitting hard. Let's go ahead and show you in, let's, let's show her off in Fire Knight, guys. Then we'll go ahead and end the video after that. I could show you in every dungeon, but you guys get the point, right? So let's use her in Fire Knight. She's on my main team here in Fire Knight already. So let's just go ahead and give it a try. I actually have Foley in here. You're not supposed to be there, Foley. <laughs> what are you doing there? Uh, who do I normally have in instead of Foley? Let's just add Biggin back in to help with the waves. 
I'm not sure who I normally go with. I need to write this stuff down. It's awful. I told you guys this before, but the worst part about creating YouTube content is you mess with your team so much that I forget who my best team is all the time. I'm like, wow, I had like a one minute and 30 second time on this dungeon. Who did I do that with? You know, you kind of forget. But either way, Allure is really the star of this show, but you're going to see uh, Cold Hearts right there as well. Everybody on this team just gets the job done. Uh, great champions, a great team here for Fire Knight. I'm really happy at how optimized this team is. Actually, you know what? It wasn't Biggin that I had in here. I was actually testing out uh, Shiromani in that spot. And actually, I really liked her in there. So Biggin is probably, this is probably not my best team, uh, but we'll see how we do here. So it looks like we'll probably get to the Fire Knight in about a minute and 10 seconds, maybe. Maybe a little bit longer. Definitely not what we're going for. We want to go, we want to try to get to the, in the end game, to get fully optimized, you really want to try to get to the Fire Knight in around a minute. And we're talking like really end game here, uh, but that's kind of my goal. And we're going to be well above that here, but you'll see how hard she hits once we actually get that shield down. And she helps getting the shield down as well, because if you guys are lucky enough to have a lure in Cold Heart, that's all you need for Fire Knight. Just put some support around them. Some crowd control, some support, a debuffer. Heck, even, even War Maiden, and you're good, you know? Tyrell, War Maiden, Stag Knight, all of those options are fine. So we get to the Fire Knight a minute and a half in here. And you can see, hopefully she doesn't have her Heart Seeker right now. Nice, and look at that. The four hitter takes that shield down, and guess what, guys? That shield's... N okay. I was gonna, okay, there it is, 228K, not bad at all. That shield's never gonna go back up either. We got Terminator manipulation all over the place in this comp. So we got one on, uh, everybody except for Stag Knight on this team has Terminator, and that's great. Once you get to the Fire Knight, and that's, why, that's another reason why a Biggin is not good on this comp at all. It's actually gonna take our time way up because of the affinity matchup, so shame on me for putting him in there. But either way, you guys will uh, get the point, right? And notice, again, I mean, the, the Heart Seeker ability is going to fully reduce the turn meter. The A1 on the Lure is going to reduce the turn meter. We have the uh, A3 on Biggin reduces turn meter. The A2 and the A3 of Lysandra reduces turn meter. There's no way that he actually gets another turn, the Fire Knight that is. So it's just about, you know, letting Cold Heart go as much as humanly possible. And there it is, another 541,000 damage off of the Fire Knight here. So Biggin was an awful example in this team comp. All those weak hits is just really, uh, you know, not, not exemplifying how awesome this team can be. So again, uh, a dumb, a dumb oversight in my, in my, uh, on my part for putting him on the team. But either way, guys, you get the chance. Oh, you know what? The shield is actually not bad with the crit rate and the crit damage. I'm going to keep it even though it is a regeneration, which I think is one of the meh sets in the game. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Cold Heart, I mean, if you don't know by now, now you know, right, Playa? <laughs> so Cold Heart's a beast. Good luck with her, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you, you see the full potential of Cold Heart, that she is a champion you can invest in in the early game. She's a beast. She's going to help you everywhere in the early game, in the mid game, and even well into the end game of Raid Shadow Legends. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, take care, guys.